The moment Deborah discovered she was pregnant holds a special place in my heart forever. We shared tears of joy, overwhelmed by the realization that we would soon welcome a baby into our home. I made a heartfelt promise to Deborah that I would strive to be the best dad I could be. Deborah and I had waited to become parents for a long time. We were one of those miracle couples who conceived after going through tons of failed fertility treatments and doctors telling us there was no chance. We'll be the best parents to him, darling. I told Deborah one night, I can't wait to hold our baby in my arms. I know, honey, she'd said, smiling. I gently kissed her baby bump and promised Deborah I'd always be by her side. Deborah had always been very anxious about the pregnancy due to the complications, and I had told her I would be there for her, so there was no need to worry. Little did I know fate would plunge me into a situation where I'd have to choose between her and my mom while I was in labor. I still get chills when I recall that day. It started as a beautiful day. The sun was shining brightly and nothing seemed wrong with the outside world. I was preparing breakfast in the kitchen because Deborah wasn't feeling well that morning. I quickly assembled a breakfast plate for her and I went to call her for breakfast. As I entered our bedroom, I saw she was leaning against the wall with one hand, clutching her baby bump and breathing heavily. Honey, are you okay? I dashed to her, worried. Should I call the doctor? Gordon, my water, it, it broke. She whispered heavily, and that's when I noticed the floor beneath her. It was wet. Take me to the hospital, Gordon, please, she cried. Jesus, I panicked. I'll get the car started. Just hang on a sec, honey. I ran to our car, grabbing the keys from the bowl on the living room shelf. I opened the car door, then rushed back inside to help Deborah. Don't worry, honey. We'll reach the hospital in no time. Okay, we've got this. I was comforting her as her labor pains began. I was terrified and nervous. I was praying everything would be fine. After we made it to the car and Deborah got inside, I locked her door and rushed to take my seat. Then my phone rang. It was my mom's nurse, Marla, calling me. My mother had been diagnosed with a progressive cardiac condition, and due to her illness, she was confined to bed rest. Worried, I answered the phone, and Marla's voice on the other end of the line broke me from inside. Gordon, she said in a weak voice. Your mom? She had a heart attack, so I took her to the hospital. The doctors say there is little hope she'll make it. Your mother is dying. I think you should be here as soon as you can. Jesus, Jesus. I exhaled a sigh. Why was everything happening at the same time? I was ripped to shreds and didn't know what to do. On the one hand, there was Deborah, who was in labor, and on the other, there was my mother. I went inside the car, tears in my eyes, and told Deborah everything. I couldn't hide it from her, anyway. She saw my face and asked me what was wrong, and I blurted everything out. Mom is dying, honey. She had a heart attack, and Marla's asking me to be there as soon as possible. I am so nervous. I, I don't know what to do. Honey, Deborah said, call a taxi. I'll go by myself. What? I was taken aback. No, we can't do that. She was drenched in sweat and moaning in pain. Look at you. It's just not. We don't have time, honey. Ah, call the taxi now, Gordon. Your mom needs you. You are a son first, then a husband. I will manage. Your mom, she, her pain was becoming worse. I'm calling the taxi. Oh God. Thankfully, I got a taxi soon and I instructed the driver to take Deborah to the hospital safely. My hand shook as I drove to my mother's hospital and my tears wouldn't stop. My heart was racing, wondering about Deborah's condition and if our baby would be all right. As I arrived at the hospital, I saw Marla sitting outside her ward. Marla, where's mom? What happened? I asked her. The physicians are with her but they are not optimistic, was all she said. I sat outside the ward, praying mom would be okay. I know you'll get better soon, mom. You'll be a grandmother soon, I kept telling myself, but not long after, the doctors emerged from the emergency room with bad news. We sincerely apologize, we couldn't save her. My mom passed away that morning due to cardiac arrest. I couldn't stop crying and Marla tried to console me, but it was pointless, I couldn't keep my tears from falling. Suddenly, my phone's ring distracted me. Yes, I said, and I could hear a sweet crying sound in the background. Honey, said Deborah on the other end of the call. We had a daughter. She's stunning. You're a father now. At that moment, 
I wasn't sure whether I should be happy or sad. That's great news, honey, I managed to say. Then I told her with a heavy heart, Mom's gone. She's not Gordon. She's with us. Denver replied softly, and I had no idea what she meant until my phone pinged with a message. Denver sent me a picture of our baby girl, and I cried even harder. Our little baby girl looks so much like her grandmother. Doesn't she look like your mom? Denver asked. With my eyes filled with tears, I said, she does.